Acolyte, Episode 3. What an unbelievable episode. We really have a lot to get to, so let's get started. We start this episode with the Tree of Magic, something like from Avatar or whatnot. This is where Osha examines a space bird, being frozen in the air by May, who is kind of torturing it. Osha has enough and walks away. There's clearly tension between their ideology of using their powers. One likes to use it for good, the other one likes to use it for a little more evil. And Osha exclaims she doesn't want to do the Ascension, which is all about her becoming a witch of the coven. As they leave with one of their mothers, we see Soul spying on them from afar behind a tree. So the Jedi are kind of creeping around, you know, they don't like Force-sensitive children to be trained. Now, my question is that these children have been using magic. These are from witches who have been apparently been outcast from wherever they're from. Now, even though witches have used magic for thousands of years, apparently now it's some sort of a problem if there are children who are using magic. Now, the Jedi had no interest in forcing the witches into the Jedi Academy, so I'm a little bit perplexed as to why the interest is so severe with these two that I don't know how the Jedi even got their whereabouts or knowledge from. Maybe just feeling them out in the Force? We have two witch mothers. One is Anasea, who is the leader of this coven, speaking to what I imagine is her girlfriend or her wife, the Zabrak witch mother of Osha and May, Coral. These witches ran away to this planet to be safe. They say the galaxy doesn't welcome people like them, which we'll see later on as well. I'd say in the galaxy that George Lucas created, the galaxy doesn't really have favor or hatred to anybody except for droids. I mean, you have a galaxy of thousands of different species and peoples. The only real prejudice is against droids. Uh, we don't like your kind here. Hey, we don't serve their kind here. <laughs> what? You're droids. They'll have to wait outside. We don't want them here. The next scene is a new lesson in the Force. Something contradictory to what Yoda told the Jedi in the prequels and later to Luke in the original trilogy. Now this is where the breakdown starts to become interesting, and I hope you guys are ready for what I'm about to dish out. The witch mother, Anisea, goes on this spiel about what she thinks the Force is, kind of almost dogging what the Jedi feel the Force is, which I believe is a much better interpretation. But if you kind of watch the way she's speaking, she's saying it from a very derogatory, sort of elitist standpoint. Anisea starts to spout some knowledge on their version of understanding the Force, saying that it's a tendril, a thread, that is woven through all of existence that can be plucked and manipulated and bent to the user's will. Now, this is a very Sith thing to do. Now, look, I'm very open-minded when it comes to this show. In fact, I was very excited for this show for years prior to even knowing what the premise was. And I'm very understanding of every sort of point and angle of any sort of view or take on Star Wars. Now, probably the strongest angle here could be, well, this is just, you know, one sect, one coven in the galaxy, and this is their interpretation of the Force. Fine. But these are a coven of witches. These aren't Force users. These aren't Jedi or Sith. They're witches. They plainly say that they're witches. They oust themselves as witches. So this is a much more of a Sith way of bending the Force to their will, instead of moving with the Force like the Jedi do. The Jedi would see this as a perversion of the Force. Now, witches don't use the Force. They use green smoky magic, as we've seen in the Clone Wars many times, which actually rivaled the Force and made Palpatine quite worried in the Clone Wars. The Sith have been around for thousands of years. They've mastered their understanding of the Force, and so have the Jedi. The Sith bend the Force to their will. They use it for their will. They think inwards, only about themselves, as Anakin told Palpatine during the Plagueis scene in Revenge of the Sith. But in the end, the Force never bends to anyone's will. It'll always answer back in its own sort of sentiment, depending on how you push it. That could be the Jedi pushing it one way, or the Sith pushing it another way. It never favors one side or the other. The case in point is when Plagueis tried to create the perfect dark side entity. The Force responded back to this call, this act of manipulation by midichlorians, by creating Anakin, the Chosen One. Who was his father? There was no father. I carried him, I gave birth, I raised him. She goes on to mock the Jedi and say some call it the Force and claim to use it. But the Force is not a power that you wield. Then she contradicts herself by saying, if you pull the thread, it changes everything. So first she says you don't wield the Force. 
Then she says you need to manipulate the force to change everything, to change your destiny, to bind you to others. To me, it's contradictory. It doesn't make much sense, but maybe I don't understand. The discourse over the ascension continues, and Osha admits that she doesn't know if the witch life is for her. They tell each other that they love each other, which later is going to be retconned to I will kill you. The mother says the galaxy doesn't welcome women like us. Well, the galaxy also doesn't welcome Sith or droids or evil bounty hunters, evildoers, anybody who tries to really cause havoc against the Jedi and the Republic, to be honest. I can kind of feel the hidden message behind that sentence, and I just think it's unnecessary. The ceremony takes place, and the witches start chanting and doing some witch exhale inhale stuff. May gets the witch emblem on her forehead Simba style, and before they can complete Osha's, the Jedi arrive. They claim they didn't know people lived on this planet. And Anisea makes fun of them, saying the all-knowing Jedi didn't know people lived here, essentially. The Jedi were ignorant to the coven of witches that escaped to this random planet because they were outcasts. It would seem that she has a personal hatred for the Jedi for some reason that we don't know yet. Maybe we're going to understand later on. As even when she tried to explain her version of the Force, it was with disdain and arrogance. Like when she says, some call it a Force and claim to use it, but we know the threat is not a power that you wield. She believes her understanding of the Force is better than what some would say, and those some, in this case, I believe are Jedi. The Jedi essentially come to inspect if they're teaching children as the Republic forbids anyone other than the Jedi to teach children. Mind you, these are High Republic rules, as the Jedi didn't dare to go to a witch planet and steal kids as old as Anakin with attachments to their mothers to force them to become a Jedi. So right there, that's completely out of character for the Jedi. The Jedi ask, where is the father? And the witches say, there is no father. Much like Shmi told Qui-Gon. So these girls were created by the witches by plucking on threads of the Force. It's amazing. They were able to accomplish what the Sith, the Empire, Palpatine, Plagueis, Kiminoans, the witches of Dathomir, my mother Talzin, the Jedi, and anybody else in the galaxy who ever tried to create Force-sensitive kids could do. And yet these random witches out of nowhere are now able to create not just one, but two equally powerful Force-sensitive children. I mean, gosh, imagine if uh, Dooku hired them to uh, create the clone army. A clone army of force-sensitive kids, all with perfect abilities and efficacy. All they had to do was just pluck some threads. I mean, God, stupid Dooku, stupid Palpatine, just Plagueis, idiots. <laughs> Soul asks Osha if she wants to be a Jedi. Even though these girls are literally the same age as Anakin with major attachments to not just one mother, but their entire family, to many mothers, but the Jedi want to snatch them up from this witch coven and take them and train them. The Jedi wouldn't even test Anakin, and he didn't have any trauma or anything that Osho is about to have, which we're going to see. And Anakin only had one mother, one person of attachment, not an entire family. And yet the Jedi travel all across the galaxy to push to take these girls and test them. Whoever wrote this, I feel, does not understand the Jedi, nor have they watched episode one, or really how the Jedi would take children and train them. Even after Qui-Gon Jinn did all of the preaching and begging that he did to the Jedi Council, they still wouldn't train him. It took him dying, and they still wouldn't train him after he died. As a dying wish, they still said no. Obi-Wan had to literally say, well, I'm going to quit the Jedi Council, I'm going to quit the Jedi Academy in general, and I'm going to go off and train Anakin on my own, which honestly would have been some pretty cool adventures, I must say, for Yoda to be like, all right, your apprentice he is. And even then, they still treated Anakin like absolute shit, despite him being extremely powerful and helping them so much in the Clone Wars. And also, may I add, Anakin was the prophesized chosen one. He was created by the Force. He was created by the Force. He is the chosen one. A prophecy misread could have been, but nevertheless, it's a prophecy. A prophecy that misread could have been. The witches allow the children to be tested the next day, and they hold a meeting with great controversy. Coral says that she carried them, and Mother Anasea says that she created them, and the Jedi won't like it when they find out how they created the girls, as it's a manipulation of the Force. Something no Jedi, witch, cloning facility, or Sith 
has ever been able to do, but yet, here we are. The girls take the test, and it's the same test that Mace Windu gave Anakin. A ship, a cup, a speeder. Except Osha lies. And then all of a sudden, after lying, she calls him out and says, Wait, that wasn't a mountain! But forgets that she's literally lying, which she did a second ago. <laughs> Truly wonderful the mind of a child is. <laughs> Thol says, What do you want? Osha says, To be a Jedi. And Sol says, You must have the courage to tell the truth. The truth. The truth. Osha tells the witches and her mother that she wants to be a Jedi. Mother Anasea tells her destiny isn't decided for you by an anonymous force, but by your choice. Always remember, your focus determines your reality. Now look, the force doesn't decide things for you. If it did, the Jedi would be going to witches and having crystal balls to kind of tell them, okay, what do we do next? What's our next move? The Force is an energy field. It surrounds us, binds us all together. The Force is what gives the Jedi his power. It's an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us, it penetrates us, it binds the galaxy together. Osha starts packing. She's ready to go. She's ready to give up this witch life and start her new life as a Jedi. She's excited. When May walks in and says, you're not going to leave, we're stuck here now. So, like, has she done something? Oh, I'm not really sure. And Osha says, what are you going to do? I I'm going to leave. And she's like, I'll kill you. My sister, my twin sister, is quite the turnaround from saying I love you earlier and the Force Dyad secret handshake that they had at the start of the show by the tree. Anyways, Mace steals Osha's drawing book and lights it on fire, locking her in. Then she somehow sets aflame literal rocks. Literal bricks. I was very happy to see those damn bricks combust into flame. Probably my favorite part of this episode. Somehow, in a matter of seconds, all the witches die, the entire coven is eradicated, and the mountain burns down. Perhaps someone was behind the overloading reactor, I'm not entirely sure, but maybe we'll find out next episode. Osha and May are on opposite sides of a broken bridge, and May tells her, Mama is dead. Now, I'm guessing that maybe she killed them, or there was an accomplice, or something happened, because literally within like 30 seconds, all the witches of the coven are dead. The entire place combusts, and like the wall, the brick wall, like turns into flame, and the entire place just kind of like falls apart and explodes. And what I think is the most interesting, when I use that uh, comically, is that when they both fall off of the, the bridge, Sol doesn't use the Force to save them and stop them in midair, just like he did on the ice planet a couple episodes ago. He lets May die, and then runs and grabs Osha with his hand, instead of just using the Force, like a Jedi Master would. Maybe he forgot. Osha wakes up on the ship with the Jedi and concludes that everyone is dead. Sol and the Jedi take her to Coruscant to train her as a Jedi. So not only are they taken from their family, which has major attachment itself. I mean, not just one parent, but like all of them. But now the entire family is dead. So that attachment is still there. It's now blended with heavy levels of trauma, fear, anger, resent. I think Yoda's going to be super happy about this. A fine addition to our collection of Jedi. May spawns at the Avatar tree, and then we get the credits. You know, I went into this with a very open mind. Heck, go back many streams years ago, I was extremely excited about the Acolyte. Even back when we thought it was like a, a Plagueis and Palpatine, young Palpatine story, which would have been pretty cool. But I just feel like this is really poorly written. And not even for Star Wars, like this is just poorly written in general. Call me a critic, call me sexist, racist, homophobic, whatever you want. But I guess that's just what we are if we don't like something. I think maybe I should just turn gay and then people will take my criticisms a little more seriously because they can't throw any uh, ists and phobes at me anymore. But until that day happens, <laughs> these are my views. And uh, whether you like the show or you don't, you know, all good. Just be nice about it. Be respectful about it to your friends and uh, to your peers and Star Wars fans. And, you know, it's not that deep. It doesn't have to be such a divide between us. You either liked it or you didn't. For me, I hate it. I think it's a complete perversion and destruction of what George created. Um, meanwhile, some people are going to love it. And that's cool. And that's how things go in this world. And I am all for that. And I welcome that. So... On to episode four. I'll see you guys for the various videos throughout this week. But I hope you enjoyed my sentiments on this episode. Big thumbs down. Hope next week is going to be better. Love you all. May the force be with you. And check out theorysabers.com.